good, everybody? It's your boy, Chill. And it's your boy, Will. And this is the Pull Up Podcast. With Chill, Will. Yes, sir. And Tedra. Hey. And T. <laughs> it's episode 18, ladies and gentlemen, and we appreciate y'all for being here each and every so week with so us. Hey, each and every Tuesday, we want y'all to rate, like, review, leave a comment, man. Give us some feedback. Talk to us, baby. Yes, talk please to me. do. Come and talk to me. Yeah. Really to us. wanna. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We really want some <laughs> ratings. <laughs> <laughs> so fuck with us, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, we got somebody big in the room tonight, bro. Who we got in the building? We got somebody real big in the room tonight. Tonight we got a very, 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 special guest. Well, every time you say it very, I feel older, man. I don't know. Like, do you do that according to age? I just, I'm just trying to figure it out. All right, my bad. Nah. <laughs> You're that special, man. We that's do it out of love, man. That's what it is, that's what it love, is bro. bro. We show love. Yeah, all right. man. It's all love. It's all yeah. love and peace. I thought that was a peace sign on your shirt for a second. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is a peace sign. Okay, yeah. Turn up. Positive. I'm trying yeah. to stay all day. Positive. All day. Cool, positive. Be positive in all the day. building. Yeah. Y'all, Let's we got do. Ian Burke in the building, man. Let's do it. Thank you. Thank Ian, you for I feel like we don't need to, I really don't feel like we need to like introduce you. Okay. Um, But, you know what I'm saying? For the couple of people that live under a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Or you just might not know the business like we know the business. Right. Man, please tell everybody who who you are. Uh, I am an uh, entertainment entrepreneur. Right. That's where I am. You know, I have been fortunate enough in my career to have worked with a lot of people who have come out of Atlanta and um, helped put Atlanta on the, the map uh, in a musical way. And, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of the, my accomplishments. I've worked with uh, such people as Arrested Development, Outkast, TLC, Escape, Bobby V, Akon, Soleil. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He really don't even got to keep going. The list goes on and on and on and on. He could keep going, but he ain't got to. You right, know what I'm right, saying? Right. <laughs> Man, that's amazing, man. And First, I mean, we can let's. Let, I, I would like to just say thank you, man, for your contribution, yeah, bro. You helped thank you. so yeah. many of us as creators out in this industry, man. And you know, and quite frankly, in some ways that we may not have been able to get it, you know. No, so I, I, I appreciate that. You're, that's you're why a pillar do, out here, bro. That's man. why I do shows like this. Like I, yeah. my whole thing is like you know, it's, it's just just to give back, man, and and to to talk to educate. Uh, or just to give stories, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's that's what it's all about, yeah. and passing it on. And it's all for me. It's all part of you know building a legacy for myself as well. Absolutely, you know man. You have definitely been doing that, bro. Yeah, man. Um, I you know I I I heard about you before I even met you. You know what I'm saying? Like long before I even met you. You know what I'm saying? I grew up listening to some of the records that I know you had something to do, or some of the acts that you I know you had something to do with. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's kind of it's surreal to me to be in a room with you. You know what I'm saying, and, and 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 to know you the way that I do, you know what I'm saying. It's like, whoa, okay, this this is kind of wild for me. You know what I'm saying. So you definitely have. I just want to tell you from 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 where I'm standing, man. You know, you definitely have uh, uh, cemented yourself in this legacy. Yeah, thank you. You know what I'm saying, and uh, and you know, young brother like like me, and, you know what I'm saying, and then my brother right here, you know what I'm saying, we just trying to learn how to do that for ourselves. Hey. <laughs> yes, we sir. Try, you know, try, we trying hey. to be a part of the implant ourselves in the culture. Like you did, brother. You know what I'm saying? So we appreciate you being at that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. For yes, sure. Sir. For sure. Yes, sir. What was it? Um, so first of all, let's talk about the beginning. Yeah. Uh, and I know you probably told the story a million yeah. times, right? <laughs> <laughs> what's one more time? You know, what's one more time? <laughs> I think I still got it in there. <laughs> But let's let's at least start at the beginning, and then maybe we'll find some things uh, from maybe we'll find some things from there that we can get some answers to that maybe haven't been uh, said before, or maybe you can even tell us something about the beginning that you haven't said before. So yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm originally from Mount Vernon, New York. Yeah. I moved here um, about a year after I graduated high school uh, in '84, and um, you know I di I didn't come here 
to pursue music or entertainment or anything like that. I actually came to study computers. Uh, I was attending DeVry uh, Tech, and um, I come from a musical family, though. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, music has always been a part of my life. I've always loved music. Um, so when I had the chance to jump into it here in Atlanta, uh, I did with both feet. Mm -hmm. you know? and it just, it turns out that a uh, gentleman in my, in my class at DeVry was um, a bass player for a local band. And one night they just needed help moving equipment. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, I'm sure. Sounds, yeah. sounds good to me, you know. And um, that one night changed my life. And I started, I dedicated my whole life to the the music game. Man. Wow. Who, how did it change your life? Like, what, what was about it that changed it was, life? It was just being in the element, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Just being, we, we were at this club, Mr. V's Figure Eight. Um, so over there off of... Uh, um, Campbellton Road, mm. and uh, we were opening up for How Melvin and the Blue Notes, oh, shit. the old school act. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, I got a forty-five <laughs> over there. With oh shit, that's hard. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and that night, you know, Sugar Ray Leonard was in the building. Now, Sugar Ray Leonard is the was the Floyd Mayweather of today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. So he's just this real cool cat. Not as flashy as Floyd, but still, you know, was one of the top boxers in his get in the game, and um, you know, he's walking around the room, and of course, you know, I'm a I'm a Sugar Ray fan, right? So when he came by, we shook hands, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, yo, this is it, like I right. I I've found my calling, like I want to I want to be a part of this, I, I, I want to yeah. be in this element. And that's what that's, that's what, what changed. Did. I dropped out of DeVry, started attending the Art Institute of Atlanta, and um, studying uh, commercial music, commercial music program that they had back in the day, and that was it. Mm. Wow. Hey. Um, so, now, so from that time um, that you got interested in that, like, what was the journey from then to ASCAP? Oh man, that was ooh, that's a big leap. Man, he said that's a big leap. <laughs> a big leap. You sound like you a know, big leap, man. The uh, the thing of it is, is like we didn't have the social medias. We didn't have. Uh -huh. We couldn't even Google. There there were no computers. Right. No, right. no house computers. No yeah. home computers. Right. Um, and I really didn't have a mentor because the scene really wasn't built up here. So I had to figure it out as I went. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I just went through a bunch of different things and trying to find out where where my fit was you know what i'm saying where i was best suited in the industry you know um i, I thought i knew but then it turned out that i didn't mm -hmm. I, I did sound i did lights for bands i i booked bands um i became a manager um um uh, but then i started developing my 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 eye as far as what I saw uh, a star was, mm. or how, how I felt, or who I felt was a star. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, and what attributes that I needed to notice when I felt a star, I was in the presence of a star. Mm. See, all I had to go with, you know, were the people that I came up with. Like, you, you knew Diana Ross and the Supremes were stars. You knew Prince was a star. You knew Elton John was a star, mm. you know? You definitely knew the Jackson Five was stars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you knew the Beatles were stars. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I had to. You have to become a fan of music, though. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You Overall, can't, yeah. Like you have to love music yeah. in general. Like, yeah. I, I, I tell you this. I'm not a hip hop head, even though I represented some of the biggest hip hop acts that come out of Atlanta. I'm not a hip hop head. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't sit here and, and recite lyrics. Right. And tell you where this, the shows and where they perform that. Right. Just be like an encyclopedia type knowledge of hip hop, you know. But I do love music, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, and I, I, when I'm in the mood, I, I listen to Outkast. When I'm in the mood, I listen to Elton John. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When I'm in the mood, I listen to John Denver. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Hey. So um, we all I'm should be that fan. versatile. And, yeah. and and that's the thing. <laughs> well, you know, I grew up with six of seven kids. Mm. You know, so you know, and my family, my my parents were musical. My father was a musician, 
So he was always playing instruments at the house. He played guitar and he played piano. And um, my first concert back in the day uh, was uh, Bob Marley and the Whalers opening up for the Commodores Crazy. at Radio City Music Hall. Crazy. Radio City Music Hall. You know, that was my very first concert. Um, and I, I developed a habit of reading the credits on the back of albums. Like I would just sit in, in, on my living room floor with albums, see, people don't have, we don't, y'all yeah. y'all know yeah. what albums are? Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah. Album, okay. Yeah, come on, man. Uh, yeah. You have to ask now, because you know, people That's are, a real, what, what, yeah. that is that? Yeah. And, and I got a, 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 a you record, got a record player, player that play it, that play it, that works. Absolutely, that works. That works. Okay. Yeah. Not just decoration. Right, cut it right, on right, right now. Right. Yeah. Not just for fun, not just for show. <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, I, I used to lay on my floor and, and, and look at the album cover. I, I wanted to see where it was recorded. I wanted to read the lyrics. I wanted to see who wrote it, who produced it, who played on it. You know what I'm saying? And I don't, I didn't know that I was studying. Yeah. I, it was just something yeah, that was just, fun it just to felt me. Right. While I was listening to the music, mm -hmm. who Man. wrote that song? Uh, yeah. You know, and I, I especially did that. The well, Commodores, I was a big Commodore fan. Um, I thought Lionel Richie was an amazing songwriter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just going through um, the credits on the album, man, was just like, it was relaxing. Mm. So you know, I, at at that early age, I was learning and picking things up, and you know, so when I got a chance to get into it here, you know, I just dove into it, full fledged, you know. And then there was a movie while I was in school at the Art Institute. There was a movie that we were shown in class um, called The Idol Maker, mm. and The Idol Maker is a, you know is a story based on truth about this guy, who um, discovered teen idols back in the 50s, mm -hmm. you know, and what he used to do is he used to go to magazine stands on the street and pick up the, the latest teen magazines and just look through them and see what the people were reading about, what, what they were writing, because the popular artists were always on the cover of these magazines. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I, I developed that skill or mm -hmm. that, 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 that that attitude that he had, mm -hmm. um, I would continue to um, go to the stores, Kroger, whatever, and I would thumb through Word Up, Fresh, Tiger Beat, and I would see what the kids were reading, mm -hmm. you know, what, what they were doing, and that helped me. That was big in, in developing a group like TLC. That was big for me mm -hmm. because... Um, at the time, one of my favorite groups was Bell Biv DeVoe, which splintered off from New Edition. Absolutely. And they were always on the cover of these magazines. Like, people were really into, into that group. And I was like, man, if we only had a female version of this, I said, wow. it would be so cold. And I set my sights on putting that together mm. and building that situation. And that's how... And that's how you developed TLC. That's how I developed TLC. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's incredible, man. How does how does that feel to like? Did you realize that you were making no. history? No, that's <laughs> you really don't like. Most people who make history don't, don't set it. out to make history. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It just it just doesn't happen. Yeah. It's just you know yeah. it was just something I was doing. Um, you know, I I wanted to. This is something that I wanted to see. I wanted yeah. to see. Uh, and LL Cool J had a song out called Around the Way Girls with yeah. the big hoop earrings and yeah. the, and the, the mm -hmm. uh, jumpsuits and yep. uh, so nothing tight you know yep. what I'm saying that homie lover type a homie lover friend type of vibe yeah 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 keep hitting this mic it's stand I'm it's very expressive it's all good yeah. it's all good be um, you brother um and uh so I, I just started to set out and I, I had this girl Crystal Jones um she was already a background dancer mm -hmm. and she had this look you know had the short Crop, curly hair, was light skinned, and and had a, a fairly good voice, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna build it around her, you know. And then uh, Rico Wade from Organized Noise, yeah. Yeah. um, he was like, yo, I got the perfect girl for you, for this, for what you're looking for. It's the perfect girl, and I was just like, all right, cool. So one day, uh, one night we we're, we're having auditions, and he brought his girlfriend at the time, you know what I'm saying, and he didn't bring the girl. I was like, oh, okay. So his girlfriend came in, and I was like, all right, she all right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but she wasn't dressed 
like the tomboy. She had on a, like a little pleather skirt and everything like that. Yeah. I was like, all right, you know, it's like, uh, you know, thank you for coming. Then I went in the back to meet with, with Rico and them. And, and at the time, they weren't organized noise. They were in a group called the U-Boys. Uh. So we were having a meeting in the back. And I left Crystal Jones sitting up there with the girl. And so finally, you know, she came, Crystal came to the back and said, Ian, man, you have to hear this girl rap. You know, I was like, well, she's not what we're looking for. She said, I, I, I know. Crystal's like, I know. Just listen to her rap. And I was like, all right, cool. So the girl came in. She started rapping quick like Moni Love. Mm. And I was like, yo, that's dope. I <laughs> said, but I'm not, you know, that's not what the style of clothing, that's, that's not the direction. She said, I thought this is what you wanted. She said, I only put this on because I thought that's what you wanted. I dress in baggy clothes. Right. That's how I normally get down. Yeah. And I was like, all right, cool. Right. So at that time, right, I I I had the three girls. I had the three girls. I had um, Crystal. I had one girl named Lisa and another girl named Lisa. The, the girl who just auditioned, her name was Lisa. Mm-hmm. And I was like, but I I wanted to meet this girl because Rico was like, yo, this girl. You when you see her, you definitely gonna want her for the group. Right. I was like, all right. I wanted to meet her. So at two o'clock in the morning, we all piled into the vehicle. And we drove over to this girl's house, you know, knocked on the door. She answered the door, just waking up and stuff like that. I was like, yo, what's up? I was like, when she opened the door, I was like, that's it. That's that that <laughs> was it. Like you. Yeah. She didn't have to for me, she didn't have to sing or nothing. It was the <clears> style. <throat> it it was just if she could look that good, just waking up. And she had once again short hair, you know what I'm saying? And and I was just Blown away. Then she sang for me that night. You know, she sang in this little registry. She sang a Jody Watley song. Mm. You know, it's still a thrill. When she mm. sings that, if you remember that song, still a thrill. She had that little deep thing going on. So I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So after that, that's that's how it all, the, the girl, that girl, that was Tion, T. Boz Watkins. Mm. And the rapper who uh, rapped for me, of course, was Lisa Left, Left mm-hmm. Eye Lopez. Yeah. Crazy. And that's how... So you almost let her go. And I almost let her go. Sure did. I almost let her go. If it wasn't for Crystal... (laughs) Oh, that's crazy. If it wasn't for Crystal coming back and saying, yo, listen to a rap, I would have let her walk out the door. And the thing of it was, she was from Philly. She was going to get on a bus the next day to go back home to Philly. Yep. Wow. Yep. But I told her, nah, you you have to stay. You have to stay. Wow. Man. That's an incredible story. So what situation were you in at the... So you said you was with Rico Wade. And what situation were you in? Because I feel like, with respect, I feel like things were a little different back, you know, in, in, yeah. during that time. Yeah, a lot different. And, and a lot different, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I just feel... And um, just out of curiosity, how, how were you able to make that play? You know what I'm saying? Like, how were you able to make that play to be, to, to be able to convince somebody, hey, don't go back to Philly, stay here. Oh, that was, you know she was looking for something to do anyway. Because uh, at that point, she was a background dancer for this artist named Lorenzo. So she was looking She was looking for a reason to stay. Yeah. She didn't necessarily want to go back anyway. So yeah. all I had to do was say, yo, stay. Stay. Yeah. <laughs> stay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it, was, it, was a, it was a simple scenario. And then later when I brought Jermaine Dupree into the point, so Jermaine hadn't blown up yet. Yeah. And so, yeah. and this is the thing, Jermaine had just discovered these boys in a in a mall, in Greenbrier Mall. I love hearing this story because I've heard this a million times, but yeah. I love, but I, I, look, I still want to hear it. Like, it's crazy. But yeah, that, yeah, he found them in the mall. And yeah. he was like, yo, I got, the, he came and said, yo, I got these boys. Jermaine and I had, had, had been cool mm-hmm. for a minute now, for a few years. And, um... He was like, I got these boys. He saw the package that I did mm-hmm. on Second Nature. They weren't called TLC at that point. They were called Second Nature. Okay. Mm. And he saw the package. He was like, yo, I, the, the same thing you did with them building this package, I want you to do the same thing for my group. And at the time, Criss Cross, which was known as ALF or ALF, a little funk, there was three mm-hmm. members in that group. Okay. It wasn't two, it was three. Mm. I think the third one wasn't doing good in school, so Mama said, "Nah, you, yeah. <laughs> you got you to gotta get your grades up." I think that's the story, oh, and man. then it became the two. So, in exchange for me setting up Crisscross, um, he said he would produce tracks for Second Nature. Ooh. Nice. You know what I'm saying? So that's how that all started to come into fruition. So while I'm 
with the photographer and, and getting the package done on ALF, uh, he's sitting there at his crib because he had to. So that's one thing I'll say about JD. Like that boy, he always had music on the mind. It's funny he's got this verses coming up with with P Diddy, um, and I I take nothing away from P Diddy. He's a brilliant marketer and um, a, a mogul in the business. But Jermaine is a mastermind when it came to music. Yeah, like when I he agree. got every little check the that he music. got went in straight into buying equipment. He had his whole room with keyboards and drum machines and stuff like that. His little tiny room was in his closet was the vocal booth. So, you know, like he lived this thing. Yeah. He lived it. And, you know, I, I'll always give him props for that. Man. Always give him props for that. So he was doing tracks for um, for Second Nature, and I was working on, you know, building a package for ALF for, for him to shop. That's dope. I want you to I want you to hold that thought. We're gonna finish this. We're gonna take a quick break, but we're gonna come back to this story, man. <laughs> okay. We're gonna come back to the story. We're gonna take a quick break, man, with the amazing uh with the amazing the legendary Ian, Ian Burke, Burke right here on the pull up In podcast. The we'll be right back. All right. Speed this quick. Um, so we're back. Ian was telling us a very amazing story. Um, I don't know if you know where you left off, but we're gonna we're gonna pick it up from there if you remember. Yeah, no, we we're talking about um you know the the TLC Second Nature TLC story, Facts. Um, and then Jermaine Dupri's involvement, Rico Way's involvement, uh, story. Because that's the one thing that they don't show you mm -hmm. on the TV movie. You know, you watch a TV movie, you don't see the Jermaine Dupri, you don't see Rico Way, and they you don't were, see Ian. Well, well, at least you say they say my name. They did. They did say my okay. name at the very beginning. You know, the character walked up to the T Boz character. And say, hey, T Boz, Ian Burke is is looking for you for this group, and um, I, you know, I, you know, I gave a little smile for, sure. for that, you yeah. Know? But you know, it's Hollywood, you know, you gotta it give is. them that creative license. Cause yeah. I, I sat there and I watched how they put the group together on TV. I was like, mm, that no, is not how it happened. <laughs> you know, but um, you know, it's all good. It's yeah. it's, it's it's Hollywood, you know. Then people go off and believe that. That's kind of funny. Uh, you know, it, it's like that with, with with all the like. If you read some of the stories, like I, I was, I'm a big fan of of biopics like that, mm -hmm. especially like Straight Outta Compton was yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah. I think F. Gary Gray one. did a, a very yeah, good job. Seen that it's one. good. What? It's really yeah, good. It's really good. Oh, you were tripping. I, know, I'm way behind I think I had to go to the movies for that one. I was in the movie theater <laughs> for that one, yeah, man. I still ain't seen that one, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, F. Gary yeah. Gray did a, an incredible job with that story. Um, um, uh, Ice Cube's son did an, a tremendous job. The entire cast yeah. did a really good job. Amazing movie. But when you read how, like, how... Uh, can you curse on this podcast? Yeah. I'm trying. I, Man, I, I, no, I, no, I said, I, think. I, said no, I was going to kick you off. You say nigga ass fuck shit. You're talking to the king cursor over I'm here. Just being, I, I'm just being nice. No, because I'm, he was like, well, I hope we don't get kicked off this time. I'm like, okay, well, shoot, I don't know. Let me ask. Um, nah, yeah, we're just for uh, adults. Yeah. <laughs> But they they did a uh, oh fuck the police when they yeah. you know when you read the account of how fuck the police was really written and then you see how they they took a uh, creative license to put it in to make it mm -hmm. the story more entertaining, mm -hmm. you know they they did it with oh the cops just beat up on us so now we going fuck the police but that's not actually how the song came about, right. mm -hmm. but it was entertaining. Yeah. Right. The the way they rolled it into the script it was entertaining. So. Right. Um, you know, I, I enjoy uh, good biopics like that. As long as they're put together well. What's got Love got to do with it? Yeah. Um, Ray. Uh, Ray, yes. Ray. Oh, yeah. yeah. I feel like oh, Ray yeah. was like, Ray was one of the, the better ones. I, I swear oh, yeah. I, I think, uh, yeah. That Jamie was, did he just did job. such a good job. Yeah, he man. did like, an amazing Jesus job. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. You're, he was Ray. You know, mm -hmm. and that's the interesting thing about it. But anyway. Um, I wanted to ask a couple of yeah. questions. I wanted to ask you one about your take on how to deal with failure in the business of music. <laughs> well, you know, it's, listen, I had to learn that it's, it's not about failure. It's about God's timing and the lessons learned. 
Mm. That's how I take it. Absolutely. Um, you know, I'm I'm like, look, I I still haven't reached the pinnacle of what other people may consider what success is. Mm -hmm. I'm successful in my life because um, I've enjoyed the things that I've been able to do for people. Um, I've enjoyed watching their success. So that's success to me, man. Yeah. It's not about money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not about all of that. You know, it's like I did something. I mattered. I counted. And I affected the business, not just in a local, regional, or national scale. My work is, is internationally yeah. grown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and that's, nice. and that's important to me. So, you know, my failures, I count as life lessons. You know what I'm saying? There's very few things that I would have done over if if I had the opportunity to do do-overs. And there are reasons for that because I figured if I would have handled things differently with TLC and Pebbles, they may not have been the biggest selling female group, American group of all times. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So now when, when people hear and people who know say, yo, you know, you put together the biggest successful American female group of all times. And I could be like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a true statement. And it seems Incredible. Like, and it seems like, and what I love about it is, and, and where I'm kind of, where I feel like, where I think I'm finally for the first time at this, starting to get into this space in my life where I feel like I'm not guessing. It sounded like you wasn't really guessing. You knew what you wanted. I knew what I wanted. You I knew what exactly what I wanted. And I knew the, the pieces that I had fit. Now, Crystal eventually um, was replaced, mm -hmm. um, but that wasn't on my watch. That, that was when when um, they had switched hands. Um, and I, I must say that Chili was, she was the, the right fit mm -hmm. for that group. Mm -hmm. She was the right fit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she was definitely the, the extra added ingredient that, that helped propel them. To where they are you know so they had to look and there was something about each and every one of them that people could relate to you know what i'm saying so and, and that's that's what made them so successful mm -hmm. and now i, I kind of asked the question earlier but we didn't get to it so but i know you personally for the first time from ascap right the publishing company right um um I guess more than asking even how you got in, how you got into that, I would like to ask the do's and don'ts for mm -hmm. artists to get the most out of their publishing. What what kind of mistakes have you seen mm -hmm. that have hindered people when it comes to their publishing? Oh, well, you know, people don't register their songs, you know. And uh let me just the the one Sweet. correction that that I'll make is like the ASCAP or the American Society of Composers, Authors and Publishers. They're what's known as a performance rights organization, okay. not a publishing company. Okay. Okay. And that's important because, once again, people need to know the Absolutely. difference. Absolutely. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, PROs can, PRO, you can establish right. a publishing company. Right. Like through, a through a PRO. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But that's a common mistake. Yeah, for sure. You know, but the thing of it is, is that people don't educate themselves. Like, there's no reason in today's world, in today's not society, at all. <laughs> Why you cannot educate yourself. You can Google things. You have more access than we've ever, ever had. Ever. Man. You know, so there's Preach. no reason. All you got to do is just jump on the computer. Like, I'm learning that now. It's like, you know, I'm like, oh, I don't know how to do that. Oh, let me just look on just YouTube. Just look it up. <laughs> Whatever you know what I'm saying? I get a, a video of how, okay, I Absolutely. do it like that. Okay, cool. Yeah. You and know you what I'm saying? you end up looking like the genius anyway. Right. Because when you don't have to ask questions, I don't have nobody no question. Because why? I could just pick it, I could look at it. I could just like, look at it. Man, how you I fix this? I being just shown. <laughs> <the video. laughs> I disappear. Right, right, right. And then come back and it's like, oh my God, you're a god. You're incredible. You know how to do everything. I'm, just, I'm, I'm sure that works with you with your kids. Honey, put this crib together. We just... You know, I don't like doing stuff with my hands. I just don't like it. I, I be, I'll be the first to be like, yo, come and put that, put it together. You'll pay somebody, right. you pay yeah, I'll somebody pay to somebody do it. somebody real quick. I think, and I'll wait till she leaves. Right. Put that together for me. When she come back, I just put done. some dirt on me. And, oh, yeah, it was, it was I'm great. I'm such a I control freak. I, it's just more about being able to do it. 
Right. It's more for me. It's just like, oh, I just did it. Look, look, look what I did. I created something. I built it with my own two hands. That's what I want to feel. Doing the baby is enough for me. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Somebody else is building that crib. Right. No, you're right. No, but I built it, though. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but, okay, speaking of, let's let's talk about building. Um. You've built a legacy for yourself. How, um, and like you said, when you got into it, you didn't really know how. Um, you didn't, Or excuse me, you didn't know that you were being a part of history. When, right. did, you, when did you know that you had built something um, that was a part of history? Like when, when did it hit you like, oh, shit? It, it, man, it didn't hit me too much later on in, in, in the 2000s. Like, you know, you, you do these things and you, you want to... You want to, to get the credit. You want people to know that you did it. But, you know, I just did it to do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, but I didn't realize how important it was till much later on down the line. Even with, with Outkast, working with Outkast and being their first manager for that first album, the Southern Playlistic album. You know, I, 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 had, I had no idea. Yeah. You know, and I and I'll tell you, like I tell everybody else, it's like, yo, this was this was Rico's direction, Rico Way. By then they were known as Organized Noise, Rico, Ray, and Pat, known as Organized Noise. Outcast was their group. And Rico just wanted in house management, you know, because at the time I was representing Organized Noise and Rico wanted in house management, you know. And so he put me on the outcast. Yeah. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So I, I you know, I just knew that they were dope. You know, we we did the record. We did the record over at Stank On You. I remember those nights, you know, those long days, long nights, um, getting the record done. And, you know, not knowing that it was going to have the impact that it had, it that did, it would man. open the doors up crazy for the South Come on, the bro. way it did. Man. Like you know crazy. what I'm saying? So, Iconic. I remember that Iconic. album. I remember that I was in high school. I was that joint was going crazy. But you weren't thinking like you know we were busy trying to think where our next meal was coming from. We were sleeping right. on couches <laughs> like this at the dungeon. Right. You know we had we they had cushions like this, so chains mm -hmm. would fall out of people's pockets. Yeah, we'd be chain surfing in the couches so we can go get a spaghetti meal, spaghetti special that was on a corner store up there. You know what I'm saying? Or get some rally burgers. Man. that uh that um. Uh, big boy talked about one of the, the one of the joints, and you know, um, yeah, that that's how we were living. But it was it was more fun because we were creating. We didn't know. I think the hard part came later when they had to keep that success going mm -hmm. right. because after they had to prove that that wasn't a fluke. Right. Yeah. That Southern playlist of Cadillac music wasn't a fluke. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? But they did that. You know, with each album, their audience continue to grow yeah it's amazing it's yeah, amazing it's sitting back and, and watching that process you know what i'm saying it's the same thing with with, with the goody mo b yeah you know what i'm saying and and watching what they were able to do and attaching themselves to outcast the first album and then being able to create all on their own mm -hmm. and have um three stellar albums of their own those those two groups were highly influential in me and my aspirations to become a producer mm. because the way that I heard that music and the way that they put that stuff together and just that dungeon family I was just like so yo like who in the world is coming up with these vibes yeah. it was, was just like, oh. so good and it was so gritty and grimy mm. but y'all yeah. y'all got y'all got <laughs> the inspiration all on your wall <laughs> super fly you got yeah. the mac you got coffee in the bathroom yeah, those 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 were the inspiration of the sounds, man. That was organized. Those was live music. You know what I'm saying? They knew that they had to do something to separate themselves from the East and the West Coast and be uniquely them. Yeah, man, they did. And, and that's that's what it came up to, you know? I was wanting to be one of the producers. In, I, I, that whole movement was just, it was huge. that was huge for me. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I want to be with them. I want to I wanna produce with those guys. That's incredible, dude. Yeah. Um, so how do you feel about the music industry today? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Shit. 
It was like, yeah, can I say something real quick? It feels like it, it sometimes I gotta I and I ask myself this and I feel like um uh, I feel good I feel good about where I am with, in my music career, but sometimes I do feel it's like, man, but all my predecessors have jumped shit. Honestly, this is off the boat. Yeah. Like <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like and it's like, well, hey, nigga, what what do y'all know that I do? like what do y'all know that I don't know, nigga? Get off this motherfucker. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Nah, I mean, you know, well, you know, I just turned um fifty seven. Yeah. You uh, great, last man. week. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. Right. Um happy, oh last week. Yeah, last that's week. right. I talked to you last week. Right. I wish you happy birthday happy last birthday. week. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, 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 happy birthday officially on on, on the pod. I appreciate that. Thank yes, you. Sir. Yeah. Um, it's 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 it's. I mean, I don't listen to the radio. Like folks be getting mad at me. Like the radio <laughs> does not come on in my car. No, I don't. Yeah, it it just doesn't. You know, everything sounds the same. Isn't that sad? I listen to podcasts. And <laughs> you know, and that's I got I got to get. I'm not into really talk radio, man. Yeah, I'm okay, not into okay. talk radio. So what my car has become, what my vehicle has become, is my think tank. Mm. It's like okay, you know, that's where I come up with ideas, what I want to do, how I want to do it, how I want to move, and so forth and so on. Even on the ride over here today, I was thinking about, you know, I I had this meeting um, yesterday with Londell McMillan. And for those who who don't know who Londell McMillan is, he's the he's Prince's attorney. He's the one who who uh, got Prince's masters back and things of that nature and. Um, you know, uh, uh, represents the the estate to this day. You know, also represented Michael Jackson. Very popular, very powerful African American wow. attorney. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a meeting with him yesterday, and you know, just just him asking, okay, so what do you want to do? What where do you want to go at this point? So I'm sitting in the car on the way here, and I'm driving. I'm just like, you know, and just going through the conversations and. You know, so that's 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 where I think of my best stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, um, yeah, yeah, that that's I'm I'm looking to to move on and 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 to new goals. And mm -hmm. and right now, my thing is film and television. Yeah. You know, making that that leap over into to film and television. I think I've done a lot. I've left the mark in the in music industry. Now I'll never leave music. Yeah. Because that's that's my life. Bread, you know, and there's always somebody out there that I want to attach myself to. So, mm -hmm. oh my God, you're so dope. Oh, yeah. I, I, I got to work with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even though I don't need to, I got to. Right. So, um, you know, but, you know, I, I I feel more creative, more of the creative bug in film and television yeah. at this point. And I feel, like, I feel like film and TV gives you ultimately what you're looking for anyway, which is like, you want to tell stories. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You, you know, because when, when I'm working behind the scenes with music, other people are telling stories. Because yeah. I'm not a songwriter. Yeah. I don't produce. Right. You know what I'm saying? So none of my input is going in. As a matter of fact, I hate the studio. Mm. I, I hate being in the studio. I, I hate... <laughs> do it again. That was flat. That was sharp. It sounded perfect to me. Yeah. Leave it alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't want to listen to me though, because the records <laughs> would really be whack if they listen to me. So, but I don't like being. I don't. I don't like the whole studio vibe. Bring it to me when it's done. Yeah. yeah. And let me run with it at right. that point. You know. Um. Mm. So, but with with film and television, I have input in the story and how I want the the thing to move. How how. How I want the story to be told, mm. and you know, I'm, I'm a movie Feel buff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, my my first movie was Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, way show. back in the uh, uh, early. Jesus, so it's like, <laughs> damn you old. That, 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 that was that. What's that? That um, Kevin Hart moment. That Kevin Hart. She's like, damn. No. I'm like, no, that's my favorite too. No, that's my favorite movie too. It's, 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 oh you know, my god. Was, man. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Damn! No, I got excited. I like that. Wait a minute, I'm not that old, man. Because, uh, yeah, me and Don Cheeto are the same age. So, you know, like, right, okay, I felt that. No, I'm just playing. I'm good. I'm good. Um, yeah, but, you know, I, I'm a movie. I grew up, you know, you know, watching these movies. And yeah. you got these posters up. And, like, yeah. I was. 
I, well, I didn't, my parents wouldn't allow me to see these. No, I had no, to see no, these no. later. Yeah. But you know, like I saw Jaws in the movie theater. I was online for Star Wars back in 1977. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's for crazy. the first Star Wars, That's you know. Hard. And, you know, they, growing up, like, we, we, my parents took me to the movies all the time, man. All the time. Mm. Grease, Saturday Night Fever, all of that stuff, man. E.T., you yeah. know what I'm saying? The good movie. We're yeah. going to be able to tell our kids that we were in line for Black Panther. Yeah. 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 We all were dressed up like like yeah. traditional, yeah. Yeah, like cool. traditional yeah. Nigerian. Coming out dancing time. at the end of the movie. <laughs> we were saying Wakanda forever yeah. for like 10 years, crossing our arms and everything. Okay. Yeah, but at the end of this one, y'all going to be saying, Viva La Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> we got the Mexicans in this one. <laughs> Yo, I love it. Oh uh, man, I think we're gonna need to take a break before I ask you this. But I wanted to ask you one more question, so I'm gonna ask you when we come back from the break. Um, but we gotta take a break. Uh, yeah, we'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll be right back. We'll be right after this message. <laughs> You know what, T. Lee? Ever since we started the Pull Up Podcast with Chill Will, people have always been coming up to me asking me, yo, how did you guys start a podcast? How did you guys get it out? We started a podcast and we don't know what to do. Tell us, please. And I tell them, it's really easy with Buzzsprout.com. Yeah, man. With just a few clicks, you'll be able to distribute your podcast on all of the major podcast platforms like uh, Apple Podcasts, iHeart, and Spotify. Absolutely. Not only can you distribute it so easy, man, you guys, they make it super affordable for entre- people on an entrepreneur budget like us. People who are trying to get it out the muck. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. They make it super easy. You can go to their site and pretty much start today. It's that simple, man. So th- that's what you need to do. Just go to the site, find yeah. your price point, get it set up, get your podcast out to the world. Yep, absolutely. Get your podcast out to the world, www.buzzsprout.com. That's where you can go. And listen, ladies and gentlemen, you can follow the link in our show notes that lets Buzzsprout know that we sent you. It also gets you a $20 Amazon gift card when you sign up for a pay plan. And every little bit counts towards supporting yes. this show, the Pull Up Podcast mm-hmm. with Chill Will. Amazing people doing amazing things together in this world, guys. Buzzsprout.com. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's time for Will's Word of the Day. Day. Head ass. That was terrible. Sorry. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? All right. So, in we like to educate our fan base as well as our um as well as our guests mm-hmm. on uh, all kinds of different things. We are much more than just music. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes, we are. Amen. <laughs> amen. Yes, we are. Yes, it's we like, are. Yes, like, we amen. are. It's a difference. Right, just say amen. <laughs> <laughs> she French talk about some amen. Anyway, um, we like to uh, imp- uh, just impart some knowledge on each and every one of our guests, each and every episode. And some of the things that we do, some of the ways that we do that is we do our word of the day. So today... We have a word of the day, and I need everybody to give me a drum roll for the word of the day. Today's word of the day, it's a noun. It's French. It's from the mid-17th century. The word is raillery. 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 All right, let's spell that. R-A-I-L-L-E-R-Y. Raillery. And probably if you're saying that in French, it's probably not. It's probably like or something like that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Roll a I don't know. I ain't French, but uh, only French I know is Montana. Anyway, uh, one, it's good humored teasing. So this is like this is like the white version of Jonesy. Like raillery. <laughs> we can't even pronounce that. Right? Raillery. Put it in a sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Put it in a sentence. When <laughs> Put it in a sentence. <laughs> I feel okay, and we're going to put it in a sentence right now. When John was the only one who fell for the prank, the crew engaged in a little raillery at his expense. The mayor took the raillery 
at the reception in stride, the raillery. I get it. Because I can hear it, right? people, when people say, like, yeah, he, he railed on you, man. Yeah, yeah I get it. He railed. Oh, oh yeah. shit. I never heard yeah. that. I have. T. Yeah. So that you're saying that that you word is like Jones. Railery. That's probably like, yeah, where it comes probably where it comes from. from. Oh, okay. oh, he railing on you. Yeah. <gasps> Black people. Yeah. <laughs> White people. <laughs> Leave it, people, leave, leave it to uh, us to take a 17th TV century TV. word right, right. and just, make it our own. And make it our own We're going to make it shit. pronounceable, okay? Damn. Railing. We're railing on you. Boy, yeah. we're railing on that, boy. But what you really mean is we're having a raillery. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> the European Turn version. Up, the European way. Yeah. Damn, you learn something new each and every word of the day. <laughs> So, so educational. Lame. <laughs> so educational. So lame. You just a little high. No, I'm not. All right. On life. I don't partake in I said on life. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, all right. All right. <laughs> so, ENF Burke. Yeah. What are you singing in the shower? Oh, what am I singing in the shower? Mm-hmm. He said he like, was like to the radio. Like you were just singing a few minutes ago? Which the one? word of the day? Yeah. Um, like that. It's not a literal shower singing. Oh, <laughs> what are you know. listening to? I, 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 oh, listening oh, is that to? what it? Because what are you listening to frequently right now? I listen. I just went to the restroom, and <laughs> I I'm looking at the forty fives on the wall as I'm relieving myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm looking. I'm like, wow, they have the Manhattans on this wall. Kiss and Say Goodbye, which is one of my favorite all-time records from the 70s. And it's just a... Do you know that record? Mm-hmm. I'm, I know you know that record. Yeah, yeah. It's okay, great. so... <laughs> I hope you would have played it before you hung it up on the wall. So. Right. <laughs> I mean, some of them I have played before I hung them up, and some of them I haven't. But I haven't gotten through everything over there. No, uh-huh. that's understandable. Yeah. That's understandable. But yeah, One day. Uh, singing in the shower, man. I, you know, um, oh, what am I listening to currently? Who, um, Silk Sonic. Yeah, Silk Sonic. I mean, you know, that's because they're retro, man. And I'm sorry, you know. Bruno is like one of the best to do it now, man. I don't know why niggas be trying to hate on Bruno like Because that they mad at Bruno because Bruno is half Filipino. And Filipino are really good imitators. They can sing like anybody. But he was, mm. when he was young, he was an Elvis impersonator. Yeah. You know, and Michael Jackson impersonator. Wow. So, you know, you know, he just has good job. Plus, he's a musician. And he's yeah. a musician, musician. Yeah. You know, so I'm just like, yeah, I'm a Silk Sonic, man. Anything Bruno, I'm with. I'm Big with. Man, damn, Ian, we like the same music. Um, I, because that's exactly what I would say when people like they be like, "Well, you like Bruno?" I'm like, "Nigga, anything Bruno do, Bruno I'm is, with." He's killer, mm-hmm. man. Anything he do because and people hate on him, but it's like, nah, I hear what he's hearing. His ear is, I people be like, "Oh, he's jocking all these music." No, what he's doing is he's listening to the music. And he's saying, "Oh, let me make my version of right. that, right. of that, and and giving it that retro and feel." And that, retro yeah. I think that's what makes me feel good about it. the music because I can yeah. relate to the music yeah. that he sings. Yeah. Now all he has to do is do me a favor and drop down the three hundred dollar ticket price so I could go see him live. <laughs> that, Man, that, if he, he does expensive. that, I would be happy as hell. He is expensive. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, and that's like, and that's like for some, that's like for some, because I, I remember the last show was a Vegas show. He, I think his tickets was. It's like six, seven, eight, something like that. I, I, I heard as high as, I've heard, well, on the tour, I've heard as high as 300 per ticket. And I'm just like, dude, I love you, but I don't love you that much. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I, yeah, maybe I'm true. Maybe it was three. Maybe I'm just over exaggerating for something. No, you might, if it's a Vegas show. Vegas might be that. It, yeah. it may, it might be that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it was like, it was like good seats. It's like some solid seats too. So it was like, right. Well, I mean, I I don't want to enjoy it from the Raptors. Yeah, 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 you want to be close. Yeah, exactly. I did one, I did one, um, and he get a lot of flack for it. He he get a lot of flack these days, and I I ain't look, I ain't coming to his rescue. But Kanye, I went to, <laughs> I went. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, say what you want about Kanye though, but old Kanye, everybody missed the old Kanye. Yeah, I missed the yes. old Kanye because yes. Kanye, I saw man, shout out to my homeboy Oname. 
of my my one of my best friends for my birthday back in the day. He bought me tickets. We all went to it was a whole bunch of our friends. We went, but I ain't had no money at the time. Mm. <laughs> so so he was like, "Let me buy you a ticket for your birthday because we all going to the to the a glow in the dark concert." But they was all close. <laughs> he was like, "I ain't rich, nigga. <laughs> so you gonna be here, but you go you gonna be back there." But anyway. But I enjoyed that concert. I enjoyed it from where I was at. I enjoyed it. But I realized, one, um, I will never go to another concert and not be up close. Fuck that. <laughs> like, I want to be up close. Because mm. that's where all the action is. And that's where, otherwise, like, I might as well watch this shit on TV. Mm-hmm. Because Basically. really all I'm watching is the Jumbotron anyway. Exactly. Right? You watch the TV. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, he looked like a little dot. And then I'm like, all right, I can't see him. So let me look at the Jumbotron. Bitch, I should have did this shit at home. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so um, and then two, man, he he made me want to be a performer. Like Kanye, watching him do Glow in the Dark tour, Glow in the Dark tour at the Woodlands Pavilion back in like early 2000s, and, and who opened up for him, it was Lupe. Lupe was one of my favorite rappers at the time. Lupe opened up, um, then, and, and then it was NERD, and then it was um, Rihanna, before Rihanna was like big, big. This is like... Baby Rihanna, this is like umbrella. We just out the gate, Rihanna. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? She and, and she uh, and then it was and it was her, her, and then it was Kanye. And Kanye had that motherfucker jumping from end to end, and I never seen anything like it in my life. Like, and I'm not just just me personally. I haven't been to a whole lot of concerts, but the, but I went to that one. Never seen anything like it in my fucking life. I mean, you have to appreciate. The 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 man I I watch like everybody else watch Genius, um on like what was that was that Netflix Netflix mm-hmm. yep um and and I appreciate it and I I watch that man struggle I watch him go in people's offices and play the music the same hit music that came out years later and people not pay attention to him yeah. or the music or just cast him to the side. Like, you know, I, I I just, but he stayed with it. Like, he stayed true to it. He believed in himself, and he got himself up there. But, you know, there's, there, there is a, um, is, I, listen, I'll, I'll take you back to Spider-Man. With great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, yeah. And, For sure. You know, so when you get to that level, I'm not saying you got to be a role model. That's not what I'm saying. Right. But what I am saying is that you have to be responsible for your actions. There, there are people that are looking up to you, you know. So yeah. if you're not going to say anything smart, don't say anything don't at say all. Anything. There's one thing that I would, I would kind of like. There's one little point that I feel like maybe, maybe we can make for Kanye. Maybe is that maybe this guy is so smart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's. I, I'm saying. Listen, listen, listen. Just, just uh, listen. I'm not. Co- I'm not cosign. I'm not asking for a cosign. I'm just throwing the thought out there. Maybe he's so fully hell bent on being um, e- everything to everyone that he just he just like fuck it. I'll just say whatever I need to say when I'm here. I'll say what I need to say when I'm there. And you are rich. <laughs> yeah. You understand what I'm saying? You're rich. I th- I I'm to the point where I feel like he just wants to get attention. Yeah. Well, he, of course he, he does. He, he just, but you know, I think we see that by yeah, demeaning yeah. your and culture. See, and, I, and that's not now. I don't fuck with that. And but everybody, but the whole getting attention thing. That, that I think that's what separates a lot of people. A lot of people are really good artists, but they just don't be wanting attention. Like, like that's if it, it will feel weird. Well, you know, people. I mean, you you and have some to, people, you that's have all to, they want. That's all. Is, that's all. But you don't have to do it in that way. Right. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of things that you can do. A lot of ways that you can go about doing it and getting the attention without going in and just getting people riled up. I don't. He, I don't. Uh, you brought him up. I don't even discuss the man anymore. Yeah. Yeah. He's nothing to me. You know, yeah. I don't care how many Yeezys he sells. He's nothing to me. Yeah. You know, just just to say the one thing that slavery was a choice, you know what I'm saying? That's enough for me to say, okay, I'm, well, I'm done with it, Kanye. Yeah. And, and anybody, nobody, you still, but the funny thing about it is people are still going to run out and buy those Yeezys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're still going to put money in his pocket. They don't care. But that's, I mean, but I, and, and that's what I'm I feel like, Again, I'm not I'm not siding with him. I just feel like 
he, he is doing all this shit for attention, and that's how he stays relevant, and that's how he's all, and that's how he's a billionaire because he because you said like you said he knows it don't it don't fucking matter what he said. And so, but you People know, still you're, you're, buy his yeah, but you know, you still have to set an example for I this agree. generation that's coming up. I agree. You know what I'm saying, and and that's I my agree. thing. I think he's being reckless. Yeah, with, he's being with, reckless. with what he's doing and what mm -hmm. he's saying, and that's why he's irrelevant to me. Like if if I had kids, you know, there no, there would be no Kanye in my house. He he's being reckless. Us, but he might not care. Is no, he I'm doesn't. Saying. He doesn't care. You know what I'm saying? Obviously. 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 He might not you know, care. you want to get up there in, in Fashion Week and wear a White Lives Matter yeah. sweatshirt, <laughs> then have that dope broad Candace, Candace yeah. Owens with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And just knowing what that whole situation is, I'm just like, wow. Wow. But he did it at Fashion Week for a reason. Yeah, because he wanted that attention. Exactly. And believe me, he got he it. Got it. But <laughs> was that the right way to get it? Was that yeah. showing proper respect for the people who died for us to have the rights that we have in this world today? Yeah. People will show you exactly who they are. Now that's what Maya and said. I, and I feel like that's, and what, Maya that's also what he's doing. Said, Maya said, when they show when you, they show you please believe, believe them. Believe you got to believe yeah, them, man. You know true. what I'm saying? And yeah. I believe you, Kanye. That's why I'm like... On that note... Yeah, man. That's going to be a great soundbite. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for fan questions. Fan questions. Fan questions. 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 Fan questions, questions, questions. questions. So, tell us about your <laughs> consultation business oh yeah okay well, there, <laughs> there are a lot of people that want to get into um uh the industry and i do do consulting and um i charge for the consultant but i do offer free 15 minutes free with me on the phone um if you go to my ig page uh ian f burke at ian f burke i a n f b u r k e you can hit the link in my bio and you can schedule a free consultation call with me for 15 minutes. And then if, if you're looking to really, and you know, look, I, this is part of what I do for a living too. I, I can't, you know, consult you for free. Right, right. You right. know what I'm and saying? You shouldn't have to. Right. You know, so if you're really serious about it and you have the type of budget that you need to um, contract me to work alongside what you're doing, then let's let's get it done. Let's make it happen. Mm. You know? Mm. That's good to know. And we will have T Lee's teachable moment after this short break. Hey. Okay. And now <laughs> it's time for T Lee's Teachable Moment. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> <Duh. laughs> Y'all really got her singing. She does this and on her own. she's getting into it, too. She does this on her own. She's doing riffs and yeah. stuff like that, like yeah. she's taking us yeah. to church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the way. Yeah. <laughs> One more time. See, now I'm self-conscious. Uh, <coughs> teacher boom. <laughs> you can't do it. Teacher boom. Mom. Man. Okay. Go on. Go on. Go on. Yeah. No, we're done? <sighs> no. I'm going to keep it short and sweet today. Learn to be concerned. Not worry. Because worry is pointless. And it will never, ever bring us to that place of progression that we want. To be concerned means that we're paying attention, that we are aware of what's going on. To be worried is almost like putting ourselves in a place of distress, yeah. which is not productive. So learn to be concerned, not worried. And that's why I'm not worried about Kanye West. <laughs> <laughs> he brought it back full brought it circle. Back. Yes. Brought it back full circle. Ian, man, thank you so much for coming man, through. Ian, yeah, this has been a blessing, man. Pleasure. Pleasure. Absolute thank pleasure, you, man. I don't man. even know if you know how much Yo. of a blessing it is, but like I said, man, it's been a blessing to just have your presence in the building, man. Just and the knowledge. To talk to you about your stories. Appreciate it. Um, you know, this anytime, is, man. This is I crazy. love doing this. Yes, Any, sir. We'll do it tomorrow. No, <laughs> Not that soon. And the next day. And the next day. And the next day. <laughs> he 
said, nigga. You Sometimes that's part of the pain. That's part of the pain. That's part of the pain consultation. That's exactly. That's enough for free. You got me for free one time, nigga. <laughs> like you niggas got a whole hour. Man, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> uh man, it's been an amazing time. Um Yeah, man. You guys like, rate, and review, man. I hope you enjoyed this this episode with the great Ian Burke. 18. Um 18, man. They still letting us post this shit on YouTube, dog. <laughs> Thank you. But it's cool. Um, because we're good people. Hey, we're good people. We're having a great, Yo, great quick, time. Yo, quick, listen, quick shout out to the one behind the camera that nobody sees that is going to have to see at some point, Tedra, holding it down for us in She's the background. The hey. Hello. <laughs> shout out to Tedra for, the doing singer. All, for doing all the dirty work. Singing. Hell yeah. Uh, we're going to have a singer out, a singer's out in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been the Pull Up Podcast. Anytime you want. Anytime you feel. Pull up on Chill Wheel, baby. Hey. hey. Tedra, sing us out. Ooh, whoa, whoa. Cut. Right. <laughs> <laughs>